Welcome to all our visitors. I know that you're excited to see your loved one uh, baptized this morning. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> God has God has so, been so good to us, hasn't He? He's been so good to us. So, just a welcome from us to you. And uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to be having seven baptisms today. <laughs> And all of them are young people. So uh, this is really exciting. And uh, our, as was said, our children, you guys are going to get to see a baptism. Who here has saw a baptism before? Me. All you kids? Me. Some kids have not. Who hasn't seen a baptism before? Well, you're about to, you're about to see a baptism this morning, and it's really awesome. So um, today I'm going to be speaking to you all about the importance of baptism. And baptism is a very, very important thing in our Christian walk. So before, before, uh, before I speak this morning, we're just going to bow our hearts before Jesus in prayer. And I should just mention that after our baptism uh, service this morning, we're going to be entering into a time of communion. So I would just ask that you prepare your hearts in advance of that. If you're a believer here today, we're going to have a communion service. Isn't it fitting? new life in Christ, and we talk about what Jesus did for us and who he is, and we celebrate that together. Amen. Let's bow in prayer together. Jesus, we thank you that uh, you have died for us, that you came, Lord, because you loved us so much, and you rose from the grave. And Lord, we thank you for the service that we have today. We uh, especially pray your blessing upon the seven young people that are going to be baptized today following you in obedience, God. We just pray your blessing upon them. Lord, we pray that our hearts would be open to your Holy Spirit. As you speak, Lord, um, may we hear from you and, and apply what we hear to our lives. And as we talk about water baptism and the importance of that, Lord, I just pray that you'd help me to speak it in the way that honors you, in a way that you design. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. So long ago, through ancient prophecies, people were told about the need for a Savior and the coming of a Savior into the world. And the Bible tells us that this Savior would be no less than God Himself, the glorious King of the universe, who would veil Himself in flesh and would come to us to save us. The Savior would be born in the little town of Bethlehem in the ancient land of Israel. And the importance of this coming king would be absolutely monumental. There's no other event in history that has meant so much or will ever mean so much as the coming of Jesus into the world to save us from our sins. Now, it was so important to God that God spoke through his prophet Malachi. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, the prophet Malachi gave a prediction of one who would come ahead of the king to announce his arrival. The prophet Malachi broadcast God's prediction of the coming Savior of the world, the King of the universe. And he said this, Look, I am sending my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you look for so eagerly is surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So we see, many years later, the fulfillment of this prophecy came into being when a man named John the Baptist, kids, have you ever heard of John the Baptist before? Yeah. John the Baptist was sent by God to Israel to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see that the Apostle John, he wrote about John the Baptist in the Bible. Did you guys know about that? That's where 
We hear about John the Baptist. He is in the Bible. You, got, you kids know that, don't you? Yeah. All right. So, John wrote about John the Baptist. And in John 1, 6 to 9, we read this. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one true light who is the true light who gives life or light to everyone, was coming into the world. Do you, you kids know who that light coming into the world was that John was saying was coming right after him? Can anyone tell me? That was Jesus. Yes, it was. So people came from all over the place. They came from all over the place to be baptized by John in the Jordan River. You know why they did that? They did that because they recognized that they had sin in their heart. And they needed to be cleansed by God from their sins. So they came as an act to show repentance that they were sorry for their sins and they wanted, they wanted God to clean them. They came with hearts open to receive what John the Baptist would tell them. And they came to be baptized in the Jordan River. John the Baptist told the people that were coming to see and were coming to be baptized. He told them this in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 3, verse 11, he said, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater than I am, I'm not worthy even to be his slave and to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And when Jesus, when Jesus came down to the river to be baptized by John, it's recorded in, in Matthew chapter 3, 13. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. He said, I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. And after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. You see, that's the story of Jesus' baptism. And we need to understand that Jesus let John baptize him not because Jesus had sinned like other people and needed to repent. No, John the Baptist understood that it was actually him that needed to be baptized by Jesus. He knew that Jesus was God the Son and that Jesus was the creator of the entire universe and everything in it. And Jesus permitted John to baptize him to signal the start of his earthly ministry. He wanted to show everyone, including all future generations, and us here sitting in this church here in 100 Mile House today, he wanted to show us an example of submission and obedience to God the Father's will. And Jesus, kids, Jesus knew no sin Jesus lived his life without sin, sinlessly. And, and he showed people what God was like as a human being. But Jesus did not come to show us only to what God was like. He did that. But that's not why he, he came solely. Jesus came 
to die for our sins. The Bible tells us that God loved the world and that He didn't send Jesus to the world to bring condemnation to the world, but to save the world from their sins. Kids, adults, all of us, we're born into sin. We're all sinners. And God tells us that because of our sins, all of us have a death sentence hanging over us. The penalty of sin is death. But God didn't leave us to die as sinners. No, He didn't leave us to die as sinners. He loved us so much that He gave us Jesus as a gift, a free gift to us. Jesus came into the world to die on the cross for us. The Bible tells us He was crucified. He was killed. He didn't have to die, but He did it because He loved you and me. And they put him in the tomb. They buried him in a tomb. And three days later, what happened? What happened to Jesus three days after he died? He rose again. Yes, Timothy, I see your hand. He rose again. And then what happened? Did Jesus stay on the earth? No. He rose even further. He lifted up off the ground while all his disciples were watching and he was taken up into heaven. And Jesus is right now preparing a place for you and I who believe in him, who have placed our trust in him. He's preparing a place where we will live with him forever. And he's at the Father's right hand. This is good news. This is terrific news. Because none of us have to die in our sins. We can be saved if we call upon the name of the Lord and we believe and we turn away from our sinful behavior. And God can help us to do that. He calls us to that. That's terrific news, isn't it, kids? That you can be saved, all of us can be saved? That's great news. And you know what would they call good news in the Bible? The good news about Jesus? What do they call that? What? The gospel. That is what we call the gospel. So, Jesus, before he left the earth, he told his disciples some things. He gave them a message and he asked them to do something while he was gone to heaven, while they were here on the earth. He, he asked them to do something. Jesus wanted his disciples to bring the same message of love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. That's a big word, isn't it? He wanted to bring the message that men who were far away from God could be brought close to God, to be at one with him. And that's what we call, if you ever hear big people say this, kids, that's what we call atonement, at one -ment, where we are separated from God, our sins are atoned for, and we're brought close to him through Jesus. So he asked his disciples to bring that message all over the world. And in Matthew 11, 18 to 20, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth, Therefore, this is what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. You see? John the Baptist was telling people to repent of their sins and to make their hearts ready in advance of the coming of their Savior. And that was John's baptism. We call that John's baptism. It was a baptism of asking God to change them. It was a baptism of repentance. And here, just before Jesus rises into heaven, he calls his followers to teach 
other people to believe in him too. And once they become followers, they are called to obey all of the commands that he would give them. And the original disciples were told that this obedience to him included a commandment he gave them to be baptized in water. And this was to happen after they believed. And this is called the believer's baptism. All followers of Jesus Christ, without exception, are commanded by the Lord to be baptized in the believer's baptism. This is a very important commandment for us to follow. And do you know why? Baptism. Baptism marks our personal identification with other believers in Jesus as being saved by the Lord. Baptism provides an opportunity to identify with Christ in His death and resurrection. You see, when we submit ourselves to being dunked under the waters of baptism, to be fully immersed in the waters of baptism, that waters of baptism that we're going to see here in a few minutes represents a grave. Did you know that? It represents a grave. When we go under, it's a signal that we're submitting to God's work and that we're letting Him bury our sinful nature. Our old nature, our old sin nature is buried with Christ in the waters of baptism. And then when we are brought back up out of those waters of baptism, we're making a statement that as believers in Jesus, we now breathe in new spiritual life. And we're proclaiming to everyone that we have been born again in the Spirit. Isn't that awesome? We're born again in the Spirit. Our spiritual nature is now raised to life. Our sins are washed away as Jesus by the power of His sacrifice on the cross, the blood that Jesus shed, washes us clean from all of our sins and we leave that buried in the waters of baptism. We rise to new life as born again Christians. Christian actually means, kids, do you know what Christian means? Christian means Christ-like one. Christ-like one. That's what Christian means. And Jesus asks us to follow his example. And one of these things is going into the waters of baptism as a believer. The believer's baptism is an outward expression of an inward change that Jesus has made in us. We're now born again and we declare to everyone that we're in front of, that we gladly belong to Jesus and we're a part of his family. And we want to stand together with everyone that is part of his family because the Lord said that we are, each of you, even kids that believe, you guys are part of the body of Christ. You are, you are the church. This is a place where we gather. We call it the church. But the church is actually the people that believe in Jesus that are sitting in the pews here today. And all across this world, people are gathering and, and are worshiping Jesus today. They're part of the church, those who are true believers. So we're making a statement when we submit ourselves to baptism that we renounce our service to sin and we are giving loyalty to Him, to Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said in Colossians 2.12, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with Him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. And Jesus said this in Mark chapter 16, 16. He said, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 4, 4 to 6, for there is one body, one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and God and one God and Father of all, 
who is over all, in all, and living through all. And you guys, when the church first started, when the church first started on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit's power came upon the believers. And the Apostle Peter preached a great sermon in front of thousands of people in front of the Jewish temple. Beautiful sight. I actually got a chance to go stand where Peter preached his sermon in front of all the ceremony, sorry, ceremonial wash pits that were into the solid stone that people would come and wash themselves in before they went to worship God in the temple. They'd cleanse themselves ritually. And Peter preached a sermon there. And the Acts chapter 2, 41 says, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Can you imagine? The first, the first thing that happened was these 3,000 people, God spoke to them and they accepted Jesus as their Savior. And they were saved and they were, they were baptized right away, right there. And this event launched the Jewish church in Jerusalem and was the start of the great impact of the church. God's church was and still is impacting our world today. Amen? You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. In this dark world, those of us who are believers in Christ shine like stars in the universe as we hold out the word of life. So I'd ask you today, if you've never really understood or believed in Jesus, you can come to know him today. If you're here and you've never surrendered to the message of the good news of Jesus, you can come to Jesus today. You just have to humble yourself and believe in your heart and accept his sacrifice for you on the cross. Be willing to turn away from your way of, of living that's sinful and accept him as your savior. And if you do that, my friend, you'll be saved. I would encourage you, if you haven't done that, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. You've been putting it off for years maybe, but don't put it off today. God is calling. And if today you, you've heard this message and you've never been baptized, I would encourage you, think very deeply about this. We're going to have other baptism services in the near future, Lord willing. And if you want to be baptized, please come and see me. This is a step of obedience. It's, it's not an elective. God says believe and be baptized. We must do this as obedient, uh, you know, a step of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, today we have seven young people who are going to go into the waters of baptism. So I would invite all seven of you, if you'd follow me into the prayer room, I'm going to turn the service back over to Morgan.